So today on Techno Dad Life, we're going to be installing Open Media Vault, and when I say installing, this is going to be a complete install, and we're going to be completely setting it up so you will be ready for the future. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and oh, sorry if my voice is a little hoarse, I'm sort of sick. So here we go now. <laughs> So to install Open Media Vault, we need to do a couple of things here. First, we're going to download Open Media Vault. So, so go to the openmediavault.org homepage, click on download, uh, then click here for ISO, and then we're going to be installing 4.1.3, and then you just click on the top package there, and that's what we're going to download. I already have it downloaded. And the third thing we're going to do is download Etcher. And so Etcher is a program that burns ISO to USB disks. And so for this, you can just click on whatever versions of Windows you have here and download it there. And that's what we need to get started. So next we're gonna open Etcher. We're gonna click Select Image, Open Media Vault, Open. And our device is already selected. We're gonna click Flash. Once that's done validating, we can close that and pull out our USB device and we're going to go back over to our server. And now we're going to install Open Media Vault. We're going to hit English, United States, American. So here we're going to click our Ethernet adapter. And here we're going to keep the name Open Media Vaults, local. And here we're going to put in a password twice. Uh, make sure you remember this password because you're going to be needing it as soon as we start up Open Media Vault. We're in the Eastern Time Zone. Click Continue. And so we're going to install this to SDA, which is our first hard drive. So again, here we're going to just pick our country for the nearest uh, download. So for us, it's the United States. And we're just going to stick to the Debian.org. And we don't have any proxies. Great, once that's done installing and updating, we can now pull out our USB drive and we're going to reboot our system. Okay, once our system reboots, then we're just gonna log in as root. And then our password that we put in earlier, then hit enter. And so what we're going to do now is type in IP a D D R. And when we do that, you can see that we end up with an IP address. And so the one that I need here is you can see it's the second one. It's 192.168.254.85. That is my ethernet connection. Uh, so whatever yours is, write that down because now we're going to unplug our keyboard and our mouse and our monitor and we're going to do everything else on a PC. Okay, once you've typed in your IP address and enter, uh, this window will come up. And so for our username, we're going to type in admin. And the initial password is open media vaults. And that is one word. And so first thing we're going to do is go over to general settings. And we're going to change a few things here. I'm going to ch change that to 60 minutes. Click save. Apply. Yes. Now we're going to change our admin password. So when we sign in, uh, it's going to have a different than the default password and do that twice and then save. Next we're just going to go down through these different things 
And so all my information is correct there. We got my server name. Uh, we're not going to do any notifications now, but this is where you can set up notifications. First thing you would do is enable it and then click save and then you can change different things. So power monitoring is on automatically or power management is on automatically. And we're going to change this one to standby when the uh, power button is pressed. And monitoring is enabled. We're not going to do anything with certificates and scheduled jobs. Next, we're going to go to Update Manager. I'm going to click for more updates. Click there to mark all of them, then upgrade. This will take a while the first time because there's lots of updates. When that's done, click Close, and it's going to reload. We're going to go back to Update Manager. Click check again. So no updates there. And we're going to click on plugins. And so the first thing we're going to do is going to, we're going to go to Open Media Vault Extras. And particularly we're going to go to Guides. Scroll down to Guides. We're going to download Open Media Vault Extras right here. Click close on that. And then we're going to click Upload. Browse to a file. Here we're going to go to Downloads and Open Media Vault Extras and Open. OK. Good. And we're going to check for updates again. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click on Open Media Vault Extras and Install. And Yes. Click Close when that's done and OK. And first thing we're going to do is click on Open Media Vault Extras and click on the Docker and Edit, Enable, and Save. We're going to click on Update, close that, go back to Plugins. We're going to click on Shell in a Box and scroll all the way back down to the bottom. And we're going to click on Docker GUI. We're going to install those. Yes. Click close on that when that's done and we'll reload again. And now if you scroll down a little bit, you can see we have Docker and Shell in the Box, which we'll be using later on. For right now, we're going to go to Storage and Disk. And so so what we're going to be doing here is editing each disk. And we're going to be enabling these for minimal sound and performance because they're a server. Then we click Apply and Save. And then next, we'll do the next one. Save. Apply. Yes. And the final one. So our first hard disk here, the SDAA, is uh, what our system is on. So what we're going to do is wipe disk B and C, and that will clear any information off of them. And we're going to do the same thing to C. Good. Now we're going to go to Smart and Devices. Activate Smart Monitoring. Good. Next, we're going to set up RAID. And so we just have two extra devices. We're going to set those up in a mirror, which is RAID 1. Click Create, and this will take a few minutes. So next we're going to go down to File Systems, click on that. We're going to click on SDA1, Create, Select a Device, RAID, and we can name this whatever we want. So we'll just name it RAID1. Oops. We'll name it RAID1. 
click OK. And yes, close that. And now you can see our raid has been made. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do now is we're going to mount that. And click Apply. And yes. OK, so then now our file systems are set up. So now we're going to go to Users. Under Access Rights, Users, Add a User. And I'm going to create User1. And we're going to give him a password. We're going to uh, click Save. Click Apply, and yes. We're not going to add any groups at this time, but we're going to add some shared folders. So for us, we're going to make a media folder. And that's going to be on our RAID. And we're going to change our uh, permissions here to everyone. Click Save. Apply. Yes. We're going to add in a couple more folders. One's going to call App Data for when we add in uh, different applications. They need a folder for that. Again, we're going to click Everyone. Apply Yes. And we're going to add in one more folder for me, Downloads. And again, that's going to be on our RAID. And everyone, and we're going to click Save. So now our folders are set up. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Docker. And we're going to enable this plugin. And this will allow us to add in programs through Docker, which, Docker, which we have other videos about. I'm going to click Apply, Yes. And next we're going to go down to Shell in a Box. We're going to enable that and click Save. And so now when we click on Web Client, we're going to click Advanced and Proceed. And this will take us to a login screen. And this will log into our server. without actually having to go to a screen. So Shell in the Box is very convenient for that. We're going to go back here. And so when we enable Shell in the Box, there's one other thing that has to be enabled for it to work. And so for us, it already is enabled. This is SSH. And it has to be enabled and on port 22. If you don't have that, then Shell in the Box will not work. The next thing we're going to go to is SMB SIFS. And so basically we're going to enable that and click Save. And so when you get this uh, null passwords uh, thing come up, you click OK. And what that really means is you just need to clear your browser cache. So we'll do that. Once you've done that, you have to log back in. And when you do, you make sure you change your password uh, if your computer saved it. And if we go back down to Samba there, and now when we click it and click Save, and now it works. So now what we're going to do is create some window shares. So we're going to click on that. And so what we're going to do is add. And so we're going to select some of those folders that we added before, app data. And public should be guests allowed. And then we want to enable permission inheritance. Click Save. We're going to add another one. Downloads, guests allowed, enable permission inheritance. Click Save. And add our third one, media, guests allowed, enable permission inheritance, and click save. And so what we just did there is we enabled it so that our Windows machine can actually access the files 
in these three folders from our computer. So we'll do that right now. So if we go to our network, uh, so this server is called Open Media Vault 1. When we click on that, you can see there are three folders. And let's just click on one folder, try to add a folder. And you can see we can write to it and we can also remove things from it. So this is very handy when we want to access app data or say we have music files or movie files on the computer or on the server that we want to get to from our computer. Uh, it makes it very handy and plus uh, for all the tutorials that I do, that information, we need at least those three folders set up this way. So it will save you lots of problems in the future. Okay, so that's it for today. That's how we set up a simple Open Media Vault server. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.